Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week we are officially in November and in many places across the West they're getting their first snow. So I'm doing a really cute little snowy scene. Maybe it's in Norway, maybe it's in the Pacific Northwest, or we don't quite know. Um, but we're gonna have a little fantasy land snowy village today for this week's tutorial. And I have my four standard brushes from my kit as per usual. So I have my large square brush, my medium sized pointed brush, and two detail brushes. I'm gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. And the colors that I have to start today's background step, I just have some ultramarine blue and some black and white. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So I'm gonna grab my largest square brush here with a little bit of water, grab some of my ultramarine blue, and we're gonna mix up a beautiful sort of steely blue-gray, gorgeous sort of snowy sky color. Oh, and if you'd like to see the different paints and everything that I recommend and everything that you need to paint along, I do have that in the description box, a link to a materials page. So you can see what I'm using and recommend. And just loading up some of that gorgeous gray blue color onto my brush. And then I'm gonna go across the top here with that gray blue. And I'm going to start working my way down with that color. I'm gonna add a little bit of white as I go. And I'm gonna have a little bit of gray in that as well, a little bit of black added in. And we're going to come down till about, I'd say two thirds of the way down. And we're just going to fill in our beautiful sky color. And this is just a super simple gradation from a darker blue to a lighter blue. Nothing too tricky today. We're going monochromatic with our blues. And you see I'm bringing my brush stroke all the way across the canvas. So we get nice, consistent coverage. And I think I'll go a little bit lighter down here just to make sure I'm below the horizon line where I want to be. Right about there. And acrylic is all about layers, so you can always add more of a color if you want to. Just that second layer right on top or third layer or have many layers you need. A little bit more pigment in there. I'm thinking maybe it's like either dusk or right before a real good snowstorm, right at the beginning of it. <laughs> Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead now and move right along. We're gonna be working on this next layer, which is gonna be this mid layer, which we're gonna have be trees. I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush for that. This guy right here. And I'm gonna mix up a darker blue with some black in it and maybe just like a tiny, tiny pinch of white. And with this color, we're gonna go about halfway up and we're gonna start doing some trees. And these trees are gonna come up into this light blue. And it's gonna blend a little bit, but you wanna use a lot of paint so that you can get a nice dark blue color for that tree line. And we don't have to go much further than that. Just kind of flicking the wrist here. Quick little brush strokes. 
and you want to do different size trees but we're kind of working our way down a little hill here Feel free to use your smallest brush instead if you would prefer to have a little bit more control. But I'm just using a tiny, tiny bit of pressure. And you do want to have a nice little point coming up. And these trees are relatively far off in the distance. These are further away than our house is. So they're pretty small, but maybe these are like redwoods or just pines that have gotten very large at the top of that little ravine. I also have some that are sort of in between so that it doesn't look like a perfect pattern. I want to avoid that. And once we get about two thirds of the way over, we're going to go up a little bit again with that tree line up and over here. But we don't want to have it just be in the center, the lowest part. It'll look better if we offset the lowest part a little bit. Go back in there and just finessing things a little bit. Using plenty of paint. Just little flicks of the wrist. And lots of patience. Very cute. Maybe these trees towards the top parts are a little bit bigger. You get to decide in your little forest how big your trees are. And if you have big older trees that maybe are taller than the other guys. Okay, nice little ridge right there. And there we have our basic shape. Little flicks of the wrist. Couple in betweeners. Okay. Always starting small so I can make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna grab my smallest brush just to add a couple more little fine details on the top parts of these trees, just to make sure, to, sure that they look very tree-like. Nice and tall. Maybe some more in-betweeners as well. Very cute. And I think a little bit more detail down here too. Oop, don't want too much water. Go. Okay. Just evening everyone out until it looks about how you want it to look. Gonna grab my medium size brush now and I'm gonna grab a really light blue. I'm gonna go about halfway here and I'm gonna go gently across like so and that's gonna be our little snowy hill where our town is. And that's just kind of so that we can see how far down we need to go. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that dark blue color. And I'm gonna fill this in right underneath to that white line. You wanna just bring that up to the trees. Like so. A little bit of texture, but not too much. Work that all the way over here, 
up into my trees just a little bit, but I don't want to ruin all that beautiful work that I just did up in the treetops. And just kind of smoothing everything together. With that medium blue. Okay. And right along the white line that I created. And then come back and make all that texture consistent. Well, every brush stroke matters. So we want it to all look consistent in this section, even if we do a little swipe just to get it filled in. Okay, and then the bottom part, I'm just gonna rinse my brush and grab some white. And we're kind of just recreating what we almost already have here. But we do want to fill the canvas in with white, even though it's white. We're going to have this gorgeous, fresh white snow coming up to that hill. But we're actually going to have a little bit of blue for sort of frostiness in the hill, just a little bit, like so. Blend it in there in the wet paint. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead now and step away and let this layer dry and we'll come back with a whole bunch more. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. I have a dry background and some fresh colors on my piece of palette paper here. So I have black and white, yellow, cadmium red, a little bit of phthalo green, and this is actually a different hue of blue. This is a cobalt blue rather than an ultramarine. It's going to give it a slightly different hue when we fill in the houses. If you don't have a cobalt, you can add just a tiny, tiny pinch of yellow into an ultramarine blue and get a really similar hue. Ultramarine has a little bit of purple in it, which is the color that we use for this gorgeous background. So we're going to jump right back into it. I'm going to grab my second to smallest small detail brush. Feel free to use a smaller one right now if you would prefer. And we're going to do some trees here in the foreground here in our village. So these trees, we're going to have one over on this side here. It's going to come up from the base of the hillside. Now, actually, I think I'm going to grab my very smallest extra control. And we're going to have a couple branches coming off in different directions. And then up towards the top just about like so and the trees are going to be about twice the size or a little bit taller 30 percent larger than the houses so they're going to come up pretty tall okay we're just filling out from the trunk from the base here to the branches until we get a shape that we like. Very, very tiny brush. And do some pretty tiny branches. This painting today has a fair amount of detail. We're taking our time with that till we get a cute little tree that we like. And then we're going to repeat the same process for a couple more trees. We're going to do those over here, sort of framing our village. I don't want to 
go too thick with my base here. And that tree is ever so slightly larger. Don't want to do the exact same tree. And again, re uh, resisting the urge to create a pattern. Keeping things sort of random and natural. Very wintry and fun. If you ask me, I like those white trees. And I'm gonna give them a little buddy right next door. And some of those branches are going to join together. Just like so, creating our little winter wonderland. With our tiny brush. A little bit of overlapping. Very thin branches for the little ones. Feel free to get close up and personal to your painting for little details like that. I try to resist the urge to stick my face really close to the canvas <laughs> while I'm recording with the overhead, but nothing's stopping you from trying. All right, let's go ahead and create our houses now. We're gonna kind of sketch out the shapes first. I'm going to use that same tiny brush and we're going to start, let's start over by our tree and we're going to have our largest house be over here right next to our tree. I'm going to start by just creating a rectangle with a little roof, a triangle on top and then this roof is going to go back like so and then meet. So that's gonna look kind of strange with our tree right now because we're working from the background to the foreground. So you can kind of see that shape, but you'll see it more once we start to fill things in. But I wanna do all the shapes first of all the different little houses. So if that's confusing, just wait for a moment and we'll come back to it. I'm gonna have a cute little sort of like row house shaped house, so cute. And a little bit bigger. This is just straight on. And then I have a slightly different design of house with a rectangle this way and then a roof like so that has a flat top here. So a slightly different angle there that we're looking at. So cute. Little village. And let's do sort of a wide rectangle. These are gonna be peeking from behind the little hill. just like so just a bunch of geometric shapes and we're gonna work our way about two-thirds of the way over and then we'll call it good and start to fill these guys in with our colors so I have five little houses you can have honestly as many as you'd like I'm gonna grab my cobalt blue now and some white and as you can see, that's a slightly different hue. And I have my second to smallest detail brush here. And the tree is behind the house. So 
So we're gonna cover the tree that we just made. <laughs> it's gonna poke out from behind. We're working our way from the background to the foreground. This side part of the house would also be blue. And this side part is shadowed, so we're actually gonna take just a pinch of a darker blue for the side of the house there. And add just a little bit of shadow. Like so, just to create that shape. And I just want this whole side to make sense too. So I'm just gonna bring a little bit of snow right up to the house. And covering the tree so that it doesn't look like the tree is trying to be in front of the house there. And then a little bit of white here for the roof. And now this shape is easier to understand and we can see how the tree is behind it. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow now for my adorable little row house. I live in a very long house. So when I was painting this, I was just like, I wanna live in the yellow. A little yellow row house. It doesn't snow very much where I live. It'll probably not snow until January, and then we'll probably only get a few good snowstorms. And it melts pretty quick too. We'll have a nice solid yellow front here. And it's gonna have a roof covered with snow. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of white right on top. And on the other side as well. Be careful not to blend it too much into the yellow. Cute. Okay, moving on to a little bit of red for the house next door. I'm going to take just a tiny pinch of black to make it a little darker than right out of the bottle. Okay, and just filling that bottom part in here with the red. We may need to do a second coat of the colors. We want nice solid colors. And covering the sketch lines. Okay. And a white roof rinsed my brush there. And we're being careful not to pull any red into our roof. Just getting that all filled in with snow as well. Being very gentle with my white. There we go. Okay, super cute. And then let's do a sort of a teal house with our green. A little bit of blue in there as well. Really whatever color you like. I think the teal is beautiful. And I'm gonna come up all the way to the little roof line there and fill in this rectangle. These very colorful houses are actually pretty popular 
in the snowy areas because people like to be surrounded by bright, cheery things even in the long winter. Reminds me of the houses that are in Greenland, but Greenland doesn't have very many trees. So perhaps this is more Norway, or maybe even here in the US, the Pacific Northwest. That's where my imagination was thinking anyway. Rinsed my brush for a little bit of white. This already has a white roof, but I'm just gonna kind of finesse things a little bit. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna do a second coat over here in my yellow, now that it's slightly drier. If you need to fill in anything for a second time. Okay, and let's do one more light blue house with the cobalt blue. our last little house. Super cute. Just like so. I'm gonna put a little bit more fresh snow on top of the blue house as well. And the blue house is behind, so I want to make sure that it looks like the teal one is in front. Okay, and there we have a little village. I think I'm going to grab a little bit more yellow to fill this in with a second coat really quick. But we are actually going to let this layer dry as well. Before we come back, and put on our final touches. So let's step away and I'll see everyone else in another couple minutes. Okay, and we're back with the final detail step. All we need is a black and white for this last part. And we're gonna be working with just a small brush, very, very tiny one. And the first thing that I wanna do is add some chimneys with gray. So I'm just gonna mix up a medium gray, black and white together, and add a chimney on each house on either side that you like. Very small little rectangle, but an important component of any snowy village. This one is going to come down into the front perspective of the roof here. And it's going to, again, just be a rectangle, like so. Every little house has a chimney, and they're all warm and toasty. Super cute. Okay, now we're going to work with black a little bit. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And just mix up some black with just a tiny bit of water until I get it nice and inky. And the first thing I'm going to do with this black is come into my little house shapes and sort of outline the original Sketch that we had. We're also going to add some windows with black. We're going to go up and around that front shape. Just like so. We're going to cover that with a little bit more snow, so I'm not going to worry too much of the, about what what's happening here at the base of the house. But I am going to add a little door. So this house is maybe two story. I'm gonna add some windows that are on an angle. 
here on the side of the house. And fill those in with black. You could use a paint pen, I would imagine. It's funny though, I hold pencils completely differently than I hold a brush. And the brush is a little bit easier on my wrist, so I like to do it a little with a brush. And then I'm going to do a little square on top and maybe two rectangles. Got to have lots of windows. Important. And that's a big two-story house. I'm going to get those all filled in with black as well. And I think I'll go ahead and outline the roof shape as well. And I'm going to do the same thing over in my yellow house. I'm going to take my shadow underneath the ledge. Here is where the snow would be. And then I'm also going to outline the chimney. Very small details today, everyone. And it's going to make everything look so much more put together. Super cute. I think this little house will have a door like so, maybe a small window or an upstairs. And two windows here at the side. Very small details. They make all the difference, okay? And just moving right along to our little red house. Doesn't have to be perfectly outlined. Gives it a little bit of a painterly feel. To have the line be a little disjointed, things don't have to be too perfect. And we're going to add shutters here in a minute. And it's going to make it look a little bit more realistic. But we're going for a cute fantasy vibe today, so. And just getting in this greenhouse outlined now. Oh, and can't forget my little chimney my favorite part i wish my house had a fireplace alas just a number of heaters okay making sure didn't leave anybody out And then these are maybe our single story houses. So they don't have the second story windows. Little houses. So cute. And then maybe this is the side of someone's house. I'm just gonna do a rectangular window on that one to mix it up a little. Don't want them to be too matchy matchy, although definitely they are all the same style. Got 
just a quick but detailed outline all around those shapes. So cute. Okay, we're gonna have some fun with white now. Rinsing my brush, I'm gonna grab some white and I'm gonna do some curling cue smoke coming out of each little chimney. They don't all have to be perfect curly cues and maybe some you could actually do multiple curly cues. Different directions. But you gotta have the cozy vibe coming from each little chimney. I want them to be a little bit more curved. Look at how cute that is. Okay, I'm gonna grab my medium brush again, just to refine my little hillside here. And bring the snow all the way up to cover the houses from our perspective. And just make sure they all are all cozy in that little snowy hillside. Just like so, we can make our trees cozy in the hillside too. And it's a good chance to have a nice clean white on top since this is very much like first snow vibes. I also kind of want to adjust this tree since I can't see it at all. I think I would like to see the tree come from behind the house. And just have that make a little bit more sense. Okay, looks good. I think my black is dry enough to do the shutters. And I'm gonna go on the outside edge of all of my little rectangular and square shapes. And here you get to be a contractor and decide how many panes are in your window. So they might be like four, like this, or two panels. And you can adjust with black if you need to, if you went a little too heavy handed, it's very, very small detail work. And I'm not gonna put segments through my door, of course. Just the outside shutters and maybe the snow collecting on them. Very cute. Just cleaning that up ever so slightly. And put some shutters on my cute yellow house. all the way around, however many little panes. Nice and snowy. Very small brush strokes. Out of control. Just remember, you can bring that black right in there if you need to. Super cute. Let's go around this white, the yellow one with white, this 
Okay, so we have this cute little snowy village but I think that it should be an active snow flurry. So we're also going to add some snow. Super cute. And I'm also going to take a little bit of gray for my smoke. So let's do the gray smoke first. Just right around the same shape. We'll give it a little bit more definition. Make it a little bit more visible. Okay. So cute, and in the piece for the resistance, we're going to add some snow. And I'm going to use the back of my brush to add it. And we're just going to kind of go crazy with snow all over the place, including in front of some of our houses. And even here in the foreground, just so that we get a different texture. Because the camera would be looking through all of the little snow flurry. Definitely, I think, what makes the painting just so cozy. I like to use the back of the brush for a little bit of texture. <laughs> And when you feel like you've added enough, add a few more for good measure. <laughs> All right. If you painted along today, I'd love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club that's designed for my students to do just that. There's a link in the description box below to join that as well. And let me know what you thought of this week's painting in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And that is all the instructions that I have for us this week. So until next time, stay creative.